Okay, Anna. Um, um, I was having a pretty good day. Yeah, that's so, pretty good for you. And then ten thirty came. Okay, oh, you're having a pretty good first tenth of your day. I got up at six. Yeah, I had okay, day behind okay. me. I had some real estate behind me. You had twenty to thirty percent in. Yeah, I had some time. And uh, I got a call from a relative, and, and that's as close as I'm going to get. I'm going to say a relative. And here's the deal. People always say, Vin, why are you so passionate about what you do? Why do you help people, you know, seemingly for free? You know, if people can't afford to do the phone call, sometimes I'll pick up the phone and call them. And they're like, why are you calling me? And it's like, because I think you need help. There's a half a dozen of those people right now. I will pick up the phone and call if they needed help right now. I'm just putting it out there. No, folks, if you ask me for a free phone call, you're not getting it. <laughs> okay. I do this when I want to do it when I see fit. Is when this because you can't really you trying. can't call anybody and you're you can't call a relative and do it. So you're going to call the people who'd be more receptive. Well, perhaps. Much. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. Maybe. Don't try to psychoanalyze me, Anna. <laughs> just off over here. I'm the same way, though. You know where I'm coming from. Oh, yeah. Um, well, the phone rings and it's a relative. Mm -hmm. And I'll say he because if I try to change up the gender, I'm going to say he and she and mess it up. So he says to me, I don't want you to judge me. This is this. I don't get hello. Hey, Ben, how's it going? Here you were in Europe for a couple of weeks. How was that? I was the Christmas. Ho Nothing. I don't want you to judge me. Okay. Now hear me out before you say anything. I'm giving you exactly what was coming out of my blood relatives mouth. Okay. Okay. I want you to hear the whole story before I, I just want you to know before I want you to weigh in. I want your opinion, he tells me. But I want you to know Right off the bat, I have seen three doctors. Okay. And I want you to hear what they have to say. And then you can speak. I said, um, <clears throat> I'm going to stop you right there. Are we talking about gastric bypass? Oh, boy. How and did you know? Because when you start when the conversation starts like that, and that you're not allowed to talk because they you've know been there's through, say you've been through a thousand rounds with this particular relatives uh, relative. You, you just know where you're headed. Are you worried this relative's going to listen to the show? No, but uh, I didn't get permission. You know, I, no, I, I'm saying like, are you going to is there going to be any blowback from you bringing this up, even though it's anonymous? I don't give a fuck. OK, you know, you know, what I, you know, what I want this relative to do live a long time. And if me talking about this helps anyone else, then so be it. That's what I'm trying to do here. So he says, how did you, he goes, how did you guess that? I went, because you gave me too much. Don't judge. Wait till I finish. Let me tell you the whole thing. Three different doctors. I said, you were letting me know that you didn't just go get one opinion and decide to call me. Right. I said, what are they telling you? And he says, they all tell me pretty much the same thing. They'll say, have you ever lost weight? Yes. Do you put it right back on? Yes. Have you tried every diet in the world? Yes. Okay. Why do you think another diet is going to work? You know, they're sales pitching. These fucking doctors are sales pitching. Bottom line. Sales it pitching these people. Question. Is the gastric bypass covered by insurance? Sometimes yes, sometimes no. But but what I guess what I'm getting at my overall question is because I even some after we've done this for so many years, I sometimes forget about profit centers with doctors, dentists, veterinarians, you name it. Right. Not that people shouldn't make a living. Everybody should make a living. I'm not talking about that. I just when something as serious as that is so financially motivated or could be construed as such. Right. Well, uh, the red flag. Uh, look, I know from one of my phone callers, she is telling me, Hey, I'm at work and they, they send me 
notices, you can get the, the gastric bypass for free. And I've been begging her, just please, whatever, you know, just give me a chance. Do this right. whole hog. And by the way, she has been and she's had some success. Great. I even told my relative about this person. You know, I take this all to heart because I don't want to see people I care about get hurt when they cut your stomach out. And look, I know there are people that we, we have hundreds of thousands of people that are going to hear this podcast. I know people are going to go, Vin, you're absolutely wrong. I had mine done and I was the only way I was able to lose 400 pounds. And yeah, I, yeah, I get it. I get it. But as I told this person, I said, instead of listening to those three doctors and instead of listening to what I have to say, go on to some of these uh, sites, not sites, but uh, these, what do you call them when people talk? Um, forum. Forum. So go on to some of these forums. Right. And, and see what people are up to. See what they're talking about. I'm telling you, you're going to see more people upset over the fact that they had their stomach cut out because what, guess what you can't do? They don't put it on ice and restore it if you don't like the, the outcome. It's gone. They're removing a major organ from your body. It's gone. It ain't coming back. Okay? It's gone. How'd you leave it with them? I said, number one, everyone I know loses weight doing it. Everyone. They'll brag about it. I've lost 100, 150, 200 pounds. Great. That's what he said? I told him that. Okay. He goes, yeah, that, that's what I'm hearing too. Matter of fact, I know someone who had it done and uh, they've lost 120 pounds. I went, yeah. Did they keep it off? He goes, well, no, he still has weight to lose. Okay, so he's not even there yet. He's not at the weight. Yeah, but he's off of some of his meds. I went, okay, all of that is great. I'm happy for your friend. But your friend is not getting proper nutrients because the stomach is so tiny. You're, he's starving himself. It's a starvation diet. You could do the same thing. You could do a starvation diet and lose weight, right? You could do seco, mm -hmm. calorie and calorie out and lose weight. And I said, with this, you have such a slim amount of calories that what a lot of people do is once they have their stomach cut out, they start stretching that area again before long, they're eating and they're gaining weight and they're back on the meds. Isn't and that I incredible? The story of Scott King. I said, look, I think, I, I, and look, I'm going to mess up the metrics for Scott, but I think he told me he was at 400 some odd pounds when he had the stomach cut out and he lost all the weight and the whole thing. He ended up at 600 pounds. So if anyone thinks I'm fucking making this up, go ask Mr. Scott King, right? And I use Scott because I can't remember everyone else's name. He's got one syllable in each of his names. Two Scott King is over. at less of me with NSNG, I think, on Instagram. Yeah. Go ask him about his journey of doing every single diet and then getting his stomach cut out. And then give me a call. Let's see where we are at that point. Because it's not going to work for this guy. I, I know. I know this guy. I know him too well. I know him like I know myself. He will do it. He'll lose 120 pounds. By the way, he's not that fat. He's 320. He's 320. That used to be the fattest man in the world. In today's world, I talk to four, five, and 600 pounds daily. Yep. And I get it, man. He's frustrated. He is frustrated. He's on drugs. He's on the metformin. He's on this, that, and the other thing. He's taking talking about prescription drug. drugs, prescription drugs, right? He doesn't. He's not a druggie. I don't think he's ever smoked a joint. I'm, I'm not quite sure if he has or not. I know he likes to tip the bottle from time to time. And whenever I see him tipping the bottle, it doesn't look like me when I'm tipping the bottle. I tipped the bottle. There's a little, little scotch in there. Anna bought a bottle of scotch for me back in 2012. <laughs> That's right. Anna still has that bottle of Scott. Yeah. By the way, you should see, I just looked at it. It's still over halfway full. Yeah. I'll keep it forever. Yeah. That bottle of scotch will outlast you. That is now a 22 year old <laughs> bottle of scotch. <laughs> yeah. When you think about it. Okay. Well, here, here's, here's my question. But wait, let me finish my okay, thought on scotch. I okay. will have a little scotch. Oh yeah. Right. His drinks always look like a color that doesn't exist in nature. 
he puts you know sucrose this and 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 uh high fructose corn, corn syrup that you know he girlies them up and the whole thing he drinks beer he drinks all the stuff but it's not just drinking because he's not a heavy drinker not an alcoholic he's just you know on the weekends football season he likes a brewski he's that sure. guy right okay that's fine but you know what He's punched his dance card too many times. He's got to take a break. He's got to stop. He's got to stop. I hate to say that he's got to stop the fucking insanity. Right. Susan Powder. I, I feel like Susan Powder over here. I'm yelling. <laughs> all I need is a crew cut. You know, I, I get where he is. I get his frustration and all these doctors are going, nothing else worked. Why don't you try us? They're cutting your fucking stomach out. Do you hear me? People out there, do you hear what I'm saying? They're cutting his stomach out. I'm not but, standing for it. Here's, here's Mike. My, this is why I have to ask you this question. Because it's not the physical action, right? It's the thing behind the thing behind the thing is why right. you know it doesn't work long term. Right. It's because you can take all the phys you can cut out your stomach six ways from Sunday. And it won't work if you're not dealing with the issue below why you have to why you're addicted to those foods, why you have to have it. What is it emotionally that you're satisfying physically the, the carb addiction train emotionally the maybe there maybe there's some sort of trauma or abuse. not everybody has that, but some people do. And they use food to squish it, squish it. Don't feel your feelings. You well, know what you're I mean? talking about an Italian male. You think he's going to go? To, you're, you're married to one of those. Is he going to go work on it? I mean, Lauren has. He's had to work on it. All, all the boys in his family. God bless Big Al, but he wasn't easy to grow up with. And they've all had to, like, really work on it. But listen, yeah. I, I hear you. And I also am like, sorry you grew up without those tools. But this is another reason why we're here talking about this for 10 years straight is because if it was just the physical action of cutting out the stomach, everyone would go have their stomach cut out and we would not be talking about this. We wouldn't have a podcast, Vinny. You are correct. You're correct. And a lot of the people who follow this have had their stomachs cut out. Right. And they're back doing, you know, like the, we talked about it famously on the show. She's been on the show. Uh, Susie, girl, I took the prom. Uh, I think I was a sophomore. She was a junior, a senior, and she asked me to prom. We were good friends. Yeah. You know, and, and by the way, Susie could have gone with any guy, but we had a school where there were two girls to every guy. So there was a lot of girls asking guys. <laughs> you know, that was part of you. Right. But at any rate, uh, Susie was not very tall. She's not a tall one. I mean, she might be five feet tall. And, um, over, you know, having a couple of kids and, you know, lifestyle and everything else and stress, Susie gained a lot of weight and had the gastric bypass. And it started putting, you know, the weight started coming back on again. She gave me a call. She's like, what do I do? You know, I, I, my, my relative knows Susie. Maybe they should have a conversation. Maybe you I, should even put them together. They can chat. I even said, look, I will get Scott King on the phone for you. Talk to him. If he could do this. So here's where I left it. He said, man, I wish I can quit my job and just come live with you for about a month. And without hesitation, I said, fuck it, do it. Quit your job. You're about to cut one of your organs out. How, how important is a job? And by the way, you're the best guy at what you do. If you tell your company you're taking a one month sabbatical and you'll be back in a month, They'll do. They ain't going nowhere. They're not going to lose you. You're one of the best they have. Not one of. He's the best they have. I'm not saying that because he's a blood relative. Turns out he's the best they have. I know this because I've heard this from other people. So, you know, people like sales. This guy's going to get his job. They'll say, oh, it's a month. Take two months if you need to. Because if it's not making a living for one month or saving your life. See, I do that living life. Wouldn't you choose to, to save your life 
Isn't that, is, I mean, what's life worth? And look, he saw what happened to my mom. It took right. my mom falling. And you going and living with her. <laughs> living with her for seven weeks. Yeah. I had a lot of relatives after that tell me, I wish you'd come live with me for seven weeks. And I'm telling all those relatives, you want to come, you want, you know, one at a time. I don't come have on. any bedrooms. I could take you guys one or two at a time. If you're married, I could take two of you. Same bedroom. Come on up. You know, what's funny is that I'm about to go do the same thing, but go to the East Coast and make sure people are eating what they need to be eating. I know get some things. Yeah. Anna's going through it right now, too. But we, we, you got to do what you got to do in life. And, and both Anna and I look, I don't mean to be hoity toity here. We're, we're both very, very lucky people. We can work from wherever we want. I went to Europe for a month. It wasn't like, ooh, la la, Vinny's on the beach. No, it was freezing fucking cold. I was in England. But you know what I had? I had a computer. I was able to work. Every day I worked several hours. Yeah. We're lucky. We have computer oh, jobs. Yeah. We can work. I can work from anywhere, which is why I'm the person to go take care of the family member. But I'm not running down to Louisiana every time somebody needs their ass wiped. If they want to come up here, they're welcome to do it. Yeah. Right? And I will do everything in my power to help you family member. I know y'all listen. Otherwise, you wouldn't be able say, to talk about me behind your back behind. If my you back. can't go live with Vinny, you could go to AnnaVicino.com and print out the eat happy kitchen 31 day meal plan. Boom. There you we'll go. 31 days just it, just intro to NSNG foods. You'll get there right you there. Read Vinny's PDF. Go to the grocery store. Wait, hang on. Hang on, Anna. How much do I charge for my PDF? No dollars. How much do you charge for your meal plan? No dollars. Okay. So for free, you could get a whole program and exactly what to eat for the grand total of Anna. Zero dollars. Or if you we, wanted to buy the books to get every single we recipe. You really need to fucking change you the get, You could get the PDFs of the books. They're not hard to get. They're eight ninety nine on my website. And you should be charging eight ninety nine for your PDF at least. <clears throat> if I ever I know you're going it, to eventually if I, when I when I start charging for it uh I'm gonna charge ten dollars I don't do the eight right. ninety five the nine nine I, I it's ten I do it <clears throat> I do it uh, but regardless gonna, it's it's what you would spend on a triple foam not what is it called syrup latte dome drink frappuccino I don't I even know the names of the drinks uh, let's say you, you spend, know what I'm talking about look I know people let, let's say they they spend I'm going to those do drinks a low are like number. seven or eight dollars for one drink. I know, but let's do a low number. Let's say five dollars a day at Starbucks. And let's say oh. you go to work five days a week. Right. So five days a week. Let, let's say every month you go to work 20 days. Well, you can get several pounds of ground beef and get started with that. No, no. Hang on, Anna. 20 times five is what? 100? 100. OK, if you just spend five bucks a day, at Starbucks, you're spending $1,200 per year. If you do my program along with Anna's, you can save some of that Starbucks money and spend absolutely nothing on our programs. But, and get, and then you'll learn to love regular coffee that doesn't cost that much money. Exactly. I mean, it costs something. They have raised the price. I will say I was shocked when I was at Starbucks in New York and a cup of coffee was like $3. And then Lucy was like, yeah, let's start with you. It's $3. I was like, well, that's stupid. Yeah. Yeah. And no, it's going up. The last time I had a Starbucks, I was in DC for something about a month or yeah. two ago. And I walked in, it was like, it was cold. I walked in, and I just grab a Starbucks. And uh, I took one sip and it's like, I, I feel like someone was washing out an ashtray and then took what there was and just poured it in a cup. It tasted like crack. And uh, I promised uh, last week that I was going to do some mukbanging. Yeah, <laughs> Muk, mukbang me, baby. Okay, now I don't know if my wife, if my um, mic here is strong enough to pick up a mukbang. I think it is. You so, might have to turn it up a little bit, but I think it is. Here's the deal. Um, I brought a cup with me because oh, because you don't want to taint your I taint. Don't want, yeah, yeah, because Serena is going to use the rest of this to make you know protein or protein or protein crime. And uh, or, or whatever. So I don't want to do that. Now, Anna, I'm going to take yeah. the, the sock off of this mic. 
Can you hear that better? Is that? Yeah, that's even better. I am taking it. I took the sock off of my mic. Um, because, um, and we're still probably because I think when they mukbang, they really mic the crap out of themselves. So, uh, Anna, I'm gonna see if you can hear. I've already taken the plastic your sealer off of the okay. thing here. Let's see if you can hear. I don't know if you can hear this when I crack it open. All right. Oh, by the way, I'm using the um, the Eat Happy Kitchen pink crema. Yeah. Crema. Okay. Let's see if you can hear this. All right, I'm, I'm getting ready to mug bomb. Did you hear that? Yeah, that's kind of awesome. Yeah. It's like the safety seal was popping. Yeah. Oh, God, the smell. It smells so good. Oh, the smell. Okay. Oh, wait, can you hear that? Uh, yeah, I don't th I don't know if that's technically a mukbang experience. Yeah, but, but yeah, but you know, this is it's theater for people who aren't watching it on the video. And now, now it's theater of the mind. I'm using a clean uh spoon just to stir it up just a yeah, little bit. Put that bit. right on the mic and stir it up. <laughs> it smells so good. I want to mainline this stuff. All right. All right, here we go. Now mm -hmm. I'm going to pour it into another cup because we're right on the mic. You can't really hear it. Blah, 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 That's probably blah. enough, right? Yeah. All right. Good. All right. I want to seal the rest of this. Oh, wait, there's a little bit on the cap. Oh, now you're putting saliva back in the jar. That's exactly what you were just trying to avoid. Oh, it was on the outside. Oh, God. All right. And someone might. On my desk too. If you use it to oh, just lick the desk. I'm gonna lick my desk. Hang on, Anna. Okay, go lick your desk. I'm gonna just don't rub it on your balls because it'll sting. He's going down on that desk right now. Hang on, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Okay. I like it when Vinny says "hang on" because it means he's about to do something silly. <laughs> Yeah, remember when I put uh, Villa Capelli in my balls? In yeah, there? but you had to put your spank tab over the camera. So yeah, because yeah, yeah, because you didn't want to see my balls. I'd have to report you to HR. I know. All right, so all right now I have some of the the mug bunging stuff. Now okay. um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do the first one with a spoon, Anna. Okay. Can you hear that? Because when they mug bung, you hear other sounds. Yeah. I'm not supposed to. Be I'm gonna shut up now and let you do it. All right. I'm gonna do the first one with a spoon. Some crema here. I hope I don't choke. Sometimes I go too deep and I choke. Don't choke. All right. <laughs> don't giggle, you'll choke. All right. Ready? Yeah. All right. You know what? We'll just whisper. No, no, you have to slurp it again. That was ridiculous. Wait, hang on. Hang on. <laughs> All right. Fuck that noise. He's going to drink it now. I'm going deep. I got to move my mic to get it close. <laughs> You're definitely going to choke on it if you do it that way. This is so good. All right, here we go. I really feel like you should go back to the spoon. This is no, I'm good. Badly. If you <laughs> die from choking on Eat Happy Kitchen, pink that's crema, not going to be good for your brand. I'll never forgive myself. <laughs> How did he go? He was having some sauce. <laughs> like any good Italian male, he was choking on some gravy. He and, died. And then, you know, they'll say at my funeral, <laughs> he died. He was doing what he loved. <laughs> True. All right. I got a I got a big chunk in that one. That was good. It was like one of those meaty chunks. Anna. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm. Anna, I swear to God, whenever I, I, I do this all the time, you know, I just take the spoon. Yeah. It's so chunky. I've never tasted anything like this. It's so good. 
And I, I, I'm not it's saying the that's... right mix, because here's the thing. When I make it at home, I don't like a pure, a full, a full pureed sauce. That's like, right. too, like a juice. You know what I mean? Or a smoothie. And right. I don't like it too chunky because texture. You know what I mean? It has to be like that perfect balance. So that was very important to me. I'm the fact that you don't add sugar, that. you know, all the time you think you got to add sugar to, to, to gravy. There's it no, drives there's no me nuts. So people who aren't in our community, when people post about it and other things, and I really appreciate you guys spreading the word like on your Facebook pages. Oh, I try this. It's great. I love it. There's always somebody who's like, well, it's supposed to have a pinch of sugar. It's supposed to put a little pinch yeah. of brown sugar. No, it's not. That's an Americanized thing. I'm a bushka. Well, my grandmother green, came from Italy. She, put a pinch she of sugar. always put the sugar. If yeah. they did that. It's because generally they only had access to like probably some shitty about to botulize tomatoes and they were saving the thing and then it becomes right. a habit. Well, they, here, the thing with you're this, not supposed the, to do that. The, the, you know, and I never noticed this when I pour it over meat. It's just delicious. Yeah, you know, I pour it over my meat. Yeah. But when you just sip it like this cold, there's more nuance that you don't get when it's yeah. hot. And that's true. The acid that the acid makes from from the tomatoes is, is fucking perfect in here. Uh, Anna, I'm going to do one more, and then I want you to tell everybody everything that's in this bottle, okay? Oh. I, okay. I'm only doing one more. This is not for the audience, even though I'm holding this the mic just, up. This one's for you. <laughs> this, one's, this one's for me. The okay. last two was for you guys. This one's for me. What's my girlfriend? Lola. This is for me and Lola. Hey, Lola, yes, like if Lola. you and I were like at an Italian joint right now. You were doing the, you were doing the thing with the zucchini noodles where you each have the slurp on the, on the single zucchini noodle. Oh, yeah. Now, you see, I, I don't think I could do that with Lola because Serena would get upset. Um, but like, let's say we were gazing into each other's <laughs> eyes and, and I would tell them to bring me a big cup of Anna Vocino's pink crema. This is what you would hear, baby. Hang on. Yeah, Lola. <laughs> Hang on, Lola. Don't do a spit take with sauce. Yeah, that's not good. I hope I don't spit when I got my sock off here. Hang on. Mm, this is so good. I, I think Lola just fell in love with you. I, I know she's, you know what? I was going to say something really crude, but I know her now a little bit because she helped me with the hats. Oh, she's a delightful human. I feel like I can't say things about Lola anymore because you probably shouldn't. <laughs> like we talk about like she's helping me design stuff with hats and stuff. Yeah. And I'm on the phone with her. And sometimes yeah. her husband comes, hey, tell Vinny. I said, I feel so weird about pretending she's my girl. Well, hey, Tom. How are you, Tom? Nice to see you, Tom. <laughs> hey, I'm man. always very respectful uh, of your wife. Very respectful. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We just, you know, she's helping me with that. So it's gotten weird. I got to find a new girlfriend. Who's out there that I can make my girlfriend? I, I got to dump Lola. <laughs> Lola, you just got dumped. I'm not dumping her yet. You shouldn't dump her. That would be oh, really she's kinda, she's kinda If anything, dumped. she should dump you. I don't know. She's too hot for me. She's way too hot. She will also you never get her name right. Yeah, I know her name is not Lola. <laughs> it's something else. <laughs> it's, um, uh -huh. you know, it's the other yeah. name. Yeah. Yeah, Lana. Lana. Yeah. What's her real name? <laughs> I gotta tell you. Leona. Le yeah. yeah Leona. <laughs> um, thank you for spending 20 minutes mukbanging my sauce. Oh, yeah. I will suck your sauce, baby, whenever you thank want you. me to. It's, it's, <laughs> now, Anna. Eat uh, our nuts. Suck our sauce. By the way, next week, I am going to eat another nut butter on the air, and I'm going to show you a device that I found that's going to squeeze all of the nut butter goodness out of the... Um, nut butters so i'm excited to show you that christ organic christ tomatoes yep tomatoes, organic tomatoes yep organic tomato puree that's water, right organic tomato paste mm -hmm. sea salt citric oh i could taste that citric organic heavy whipping cream obviously parmigiana mm -hmm. you got uh i'm having trouble cultured Milk, salt, enzymes. You got to put that That's in there. That's in the Parmesan, yeah. It's got uh, Villa Capelli, extra virgin olive oil in there. Organic. Right. is Oh, fresh basil. Of course, you yeah. can smell it. And, um, of course, it wouldn't be Italian if there wasn't some organic garlic in there. Folks, um, 
I know this sounds like a big. But it's not overpowering thing. garlic, I gotta say. No, uh, well, the, f- for me, there's no such thing as overpowering garlic. It's just it, it's it never existed. Garlic. And look, I wanted to do a. I don't co- like overpowering garlic. I wanted to do a garlic coffee, but they they talked me. <laughs> <about it. laughs> Stan, um, and um, hang on, this is not a mukbang at this point. I just you just eat that, and then I want to bring up something that your lovely number one sent me. Oh, by the way, speaking of Serena, you see that picture on on Twitter I put up? No, uh huh. Look at I come home the other day, you know, because our mailbox got knocked down just to post was standing. Oh, did you, you get know, mail? They did the mailbox baseball on you? No, no, it got knocked down because of um, you know, when one of the trees fell, it knocked the whole front. The only thing oh, that was left was the post. I was hoping somebody Grand Torino'd you, and then you could s- scream at them to get off your lawn. And then- my lawn. No, that didn't happen. Oh. Uh, so at any rate, um, you know, the mailbox. You know, I said, right, you know, we went out and bought a new mailbox, but I had to build the infrastructure underneath it. Mm-hmm, right in mm-hmm. the whole thing and so I, and serena goes oh i'll paint it but serena likes to paint things so she goes oh i'll go there and paint it and i was like all right after you paint it you know i when i was over at um joey shots working on my boat last week joey has table saws and and all these different saws and i brought up four by four there and i said joey we got to cut some 45 degree angles be, you know i got to make it fit under this mailbox because you got to you know you got to do the whole thing and um, so Serena goes, yeah, I want to go out there and paint it because, you know, I said, oh, let's just leave the natural wood the way it was before. She goes, no, I want to paint it. So I come home. I see the picture. She's super cute. Yeah. I come home. Serena, she, she's got painter's pants on. I was like, OK, I don't know. How, where did she has she just always had painters over? Yeah, I'm like, what, what, what did you go to wardrobe or something? Have, what, you, what? Ne- have you never seen her wear the painter? I've or never, no, I've never seen him. I, I've been with that woman for how? Like 16 years. Never saw him. I come home and she's to be like fair, that. She has a lot of stuff. And so it makes sense that she would have painters overalls like and you just wouldn't know. Well, when I first drove up, I was like, she's very resourceful. I was like, hang on. Did she just go out and buy these? <laughs> and, and then I look and they got paint all over them. So she's had these. She likes to paint. And she's out there looking so cute and she's painting away. And uh, and then uh, we painted the the rest of the pieces that Joey and I chopped up last week. And now we have a mailbox and I can send you this picture of the mailbox. I took a picture of it as if it's some big deal, um, but you can't put it out because I think, you know, we put the numbers on it too. So, oh yeah, here it is. So now you can see what it looks like. Let's see. Um, I'm looking at the picture of her painting it. Oh, you're showing me the final one. The yeah, final this, product. This is what it looks like now. Yeah. Well, so now you- I know who to call to come help me paint. And you, you can see what I did, how I made you know, Joey and I, you know, cut the little two angles and, you know, fixed it up there. And and of course, you know, it's on Twitter. Now, Anna, you see how my mailbox is like on a hill? Yeah. Oh, you get the photo. You see it there? Oh, you texted it to me? Yeah, I just texted it. OK, great. Because it's got my my house number in it. And, you know, oh, people yeah. are already figuring out where I live. Oh, um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Very cute. All right, so I took a picture at a different angle, but you see how the hill kind of goes up. There? Yeah, yeah. Of course, you know, you put it, I said, oh, look how cute Serena is painting, you know, the mailbox. I got a Bond girl painting my mailbox. It's so cute. Everybody's like, hey, bro, not plumb. Look, it's crooked. You don't have a level. Shut the fuck up. It was perfectly straight. I got it perfectly straight before Serena started painting. Okay. I had to <laughs> reposition it. I had to get it back in the ground real because the tree halfway knocked it down. Right. The only post that was left was, you know, that one post. Everybody's got a comment. Yeah. Oh, it's crooked. I can't look at it. It's crooked. (laughs) Can't you see there's an undulating hill behind it? Is everyone that fucking stupid? Come on. I need some more of this. Hang on. (laughs) You need to settle down. Yeah. Mm. So Serena sent me an article. All right. And I, and I say me, she also sent it to you, but she really sent it to me because you're not going to keep track of these things. So Serena sent me an article from the magazine Eating Well. And the title of the article is, <laughs> this is already going to just make you nuts. 
the number one snack to buy at Costco for better blood pressure. Let me guess. According to a dietitian. How is it? How is that a news article? Okay, so first of all, all right. So this is a news article. Mm -hmm. The number one food out of all of Costco. I've been into a Costco. And yeah. it's like a city block. You could get lost in that place. They got everything. Yeah, I had to stop my Costco membership several years ago because it gave me anxiety to be in there. This is the healthiest food you can get at Costco. Yeah. And and here's a hint. It's not steak. OK, well, because you said dietitian, I was going to go away from steak. I'm, I'm not going to do any. Animal That's true. Problem. You're not even you You know that a dietitian's going yeah, to. If, if this is being brought up to me and I'm being mainstream told you, I'm dietitian. Be, yeah. If I'm going to be pissed off. Um, so. OK, um, it's not going to be that, it, of course, it's not going to be any. It, it's a dietitian, so they have some cooth. It's not going to be like, you know, chips ahoy or right. anything like that. So it's not going to be that. Yeah, um, it's not going to be milk because that comes from an animal. It could be eggs if Serena, well, no, but you said I'm going to be pissed by it. So eggs are out. Um, Let me read you the byline. This will this will lead you down the path. OK, go on. By the way, don't forget, the title is the number one snack. Snack being the keyword. And how, buy Italian, how Italian am I? I'm, I'm drinking gravy and drinking espresso. <laughs> I just had espresso, too. Um, and I had meatballs. Wait, hang on. I had hang meatballs on. with my sauce, and then I had espresso right afterwards. I'm going to mugbung my yeah. espresso. See if it sounds different than when I'm mugbunging um, uh, gravy. You ready for this, uh, Lola? Okay. Here we go. You hear so you that can sound? Really, That's everyone can, turning the podcast off. Yeah, I know. You can really get the the stripacho, the slurping sound with the more liquid. The the the. Yeah. That's good. The number one snack, Vinny, it's a snack because, you know, we can't do without our snacks here in America. OK, so I'll, all right. So. I'm going to tell you where I was heading, but this is not my answer. I was heading towards something made by Kellogg's and I'm talking like special K, you know, I'm, what would be the the health food version of Kellogg's? And it's a very famous brand. And if you don't guess it, I will just read you this article because it looks like this article was written by this brand to be published at the website. And then Costco probably paid for it. We mean like, um, you know, like Metrex power bar type or something. Like that. something OK, but yep. I don't think anyone's talked about not that. a quest bar. So kind it's bar not, it's, it's, kind bar. So the kind bar, that's the, the actual answer. OK. All right. So if, here's what I remember from kind bars, because clients used to ask me about this all the time. They'll say, then you say I can have seeds, right? You sure can. And you say I can have nuts. Absolutely. And uh, no problem with that, right? Yeah. So when I go hiking with you, can I have a kind bar? That, that's where I learned about the kind bar. Right. Because it's basically seeds and nuts, if I remember right. And if you could pull up the ingredients of a yep. kind bar. Well, um, I think there are a wide variety of flavors, but they're advertising at 15 grams of protein. Kind okay. of. Uh, all right. So, all right, do, all right, so how many calories in a kind bar? Let's start with that. Oh, you want to do calories? Yeah, I just want to know. 180. All right. So Here, this is the calories. I think this is their the popular size. one. Dark chocolate, nuts and sea salt. And a dietitian. On the surface doesn't seem crazy bad, right? OK, but you have chocolate and like kind bar it is says not dark use. chocolate. So that makes people think it's less sugar. Right. And of course, the way they get those nuts to hook together is, that, you know, it's just, you know, high fructose corn syrup. Can you read the ingredients? And I want you guys to know this is a registered dietitian for a major corporation yeah. telling you okay. that this is a health food. And this is why my relative is thinking about having his stomach cut out. But go on, Hannah. Um, by the way, on the front of the kind bar, it says five grams sugar, six grams protein. Just want to put that out there. 
And it is misleading when they say dark chocolate nuts and sea salt, because people think there's so much less sugar in dark chocolate, not realizing that anything at 55% or over is dark chocolate. I'm confused. Right? Wait, I'm confused. You said that they're saying it weighs in at 15 or 14 grams of protein, but right on the front, it says six grams of protein. That's what it says. What does it say on the back? Uh, it says on the back, I guess that 15 grams of protein is just website copy because that's not what's actually on the package. Yeah, but what does it say under, you know, okay. nutrition? calories, 180. Okay. Carbs, 16 grams. Okay. Dietary fiber, seven grams. Total sugars, five grams includes four grams added sugars. Okay. Okay, already I'm that, confused. That's, that's a lie. It's an absolute if you, lie. They do, what they do is they, they subtract, they, they do that whole fiber subtraction, that, that, that lie that they started doing about 10 years ago. Right. It's a lie. It doesn't work. As a matter of fact, I think we got a tweet about something. Yep, similar I'm going to bring that. that up in a second. But okay, good. Read. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm glad. Let me read these uh, ingredients to you. Go on. Almonds, peanuts, chicory root fiber, honey, palm kernel oil, sugar, glucose syrup, rice flour, unsweetened chocolate, alkalized cocoa, sea salt, soy lecithin, natural flavor cocoa butter. So it has four kinds of sugar in here. Yeah. If you count rice flour, which I do, because that and, and what they do, folks, if you put the reason you'll go, well, why, why don't they just take one sugar and dump in there? Because when you dump, when you have less than a certain amount, the government allows you to list it as zero. So if you have four different sugar coming from four different places, that is, you know, a small amount here, a small, they're listing all of that at zero. And then they're saying only four grams of added sugar. So they only have to count four, not to mention all the other sugar that's naturally occurring in that product. I've tasted one of those before. It tastes like a candy bar. Oh, it, a, a Snickers is less sweet. It, that's what I remember. It was probably 15 years ago. Someone, oh, you just try it. I went, okay, I, I took a bite out of one. It was like my, my teeth started hurting when I was chewing it. That's how much sugar was in it. The last time I had a kind bar, and I know this because it's obviously a memorable occasion when your mother passes away and she passed away at about sometime between two and four in the morning, maybe, maybe around two thirty three a.m. Mm -hmm. And then by the morning, you know, you finish things up and they wheel her away and I'm going, where do I go now? And I went back to the hotel to try to go to sleep for an hour, which you can't. And then by two p.m., I had to be in the studio to record promos. So I drove and filled up the car with gas and I realized I had not eaten since the day before. And I didn't find anything at that gas station, but a kind bar. And so that's how I remember the last time I had a kind bar was at that gas station and it absolutely tasted like a candy bar. It was uh, very sweet. Uh, I'll, I'm gonna and, then I went, and then I went and ate steak that night. I figured I had earned it. The last time that this will date the last time I had a kind bar, it was handed to me by one of my clients that worked on the show that was still in the air called Everybody Loves Raymond. Yeah, there you go. That's how long ago it was that I tasted a kind bar. Yeah. So mine was 2014. Yours was earlier. Oh, mine was like 2000 and early 2000s. Yeah, yeah. but it, it was very sweet. Yeah. There was no doubt in my mind. And I remember getting thinking to myself, I'm trying to get something that doesn't have dairy because I was trying not to do dairy. I was trying to stay as NSNG as possible. And they didn't have a bag of plain almonds. Yeah. And then I ate, I was like, I'm just screwed. I'm gonna get this kind bar because and it was that exact flavor. It was very Anna, I want to save because we're doing next week's show tomorrow because folks, I'm going to be traveling. Save the, the question from the guy. Uh, oh, who no. To Okay, are you sure? Because it's not very long. And here's why I think it's not very long, Vinny. It's because it's so confusing. I don't even think you need to address it that long. Okay, go, go on. Let, let's do it. Today. But it. Well, it goes along with the like net carbs thing because it, it people does, are because, obsessed with the net carbs right. in, in the key, mainstream keto community and the counting of the stuff. And it does kind of blow their minds when we say we don't count stuff because we talk about it again and again and again at nauseum. And we're happy to do that because we're trying to like 
you know, disabuse some preconceived notions that you can't be trusted. By the way, the stomach stapling is another example of I can't be trusted. Have them cut out my stomach because I can't be trusted around food. It's like the ultimate, I'm going to just surrender this because I can't be trusted. And I, it makes me feel sad because I want people to feel more empowered than that. Than to feel like they have to do something. You know what I'm saying, Vin? No, I do know. And so let, let, let's cover it today. Yeah, you're right. Let's cover so, it. Randy says on Twitter, Hey, Vin, have you ever heard of the five to one rule? The total carbs to total dietary fiber should be five or less. Example, Cheerios, total carbs per serving 20 divide. I think he meant to say divided by total dietary fiber per serving three. So 20 over three equals 6.66, which would be over five, not to mention a grain. Already, I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. I'm good right. at math, but I'm terrible at word problems. Does that make sense? And that felt right. like a word problem. Like you have to right, right, find right. the thing and then find this thing. And then the train goes that way and then divide it by the other thing. What say you, Vin? Okay. Basically, he's talking about exactly what we were just talking about, where the five to one. Rule. You know, yeah. Well, you know what? Everybody's always coming up with rules. Here's a rule. Eat meat all of the day. I, I yeah, don't but know how, how, but how many, how many, how much protein, how much the, by the way, this right, is right, the right. Friday yeah, show. Cause we talked about that. Exactly. Go back one, go back over the weekend, go back to Friday. And we talk about this, you know, it's not that difficult. Whenever you start seeing, what about this rule? And this guy's saying this and I got, everybody is trying to make themselves relevant. I don't care if I'm relevant or not. You see that that's the beauty of moi. That's me speaking Spanish. Well, yeah. Here's what um, I'm going to do. You guys, if you want to know the exact grams of protein to eat in every meal, go back and listen to the Friday show. See what yeah. I did there? Yeah, no, it, it, look, and you're right, Anna. It's, you know, I, I can say it over and over and over. I'm the only guy that's doing this with absolute total impunity. I, I don't care. I'm, I'm not, it, Anna, you know, from the beginning, I'm giving it away for free. I don't want anyone to think I'm ever, you know, trying to rook them into buying a program or this or that whole thing. Right? Yeah. I don't want anyone to ever think that. Okay. In that case, everyone's trying to become relevant. On the internet. I get it. They come up with these rules. They come up with that. Their, is that like a somebody rules. somebody came up with that? Or is this just like the new buzz of like, do the rule of five or whatever? He called it. I've, I've, I already I've deleted it. Kind of, I've heard these kind of things over the years that this rules or that rules follow these rules. Guess what? When we didn't have a weight problem in this world, we weren't following any fucking rules, right? True. Look around, folks. It's not that difficult. You know, what they're doing here is they're trying to make something mumbo jumbo and sound difficult. And it comes down to, oh, you can subtract fiber from the carbs and then you'll have a net carb. Fuck all of that. Sorry, I'm cursing a lot. Well, also, shooting, too, really, I'm, I've kind of had it. Wouldn't the fiber, uh, the, the, the total carbs versus net carbs, isn't that derived from processed foods anyway? Because you wouldn't really apply that to, I mean, I know like leafy greens, they're, they're all one thing. Right. And, and it's not like, I don't know, I guess you'd have to eat a lot of leafy greens to really like bend the needle. Well, you know, um, you know, Gina was having a problem with that. She was like, oh, I didn't realize that, you know, if I ate a bunch of um, cauliflower mash and a bunch of, you know, ground up, you know, uh, broccoli and whole thing, I, I had no idea. You know, she, she looked on an app or something. She goes, that's a lot of oh. carbs. She's like, yeah, that's why I call it meat jewelry. You know, <clears throat> you can have this stuff, but you can't have that and have this and that. And it, it, it all adds up. And usually when I'm on the phone with these people that are having trouble losing weight, it's because a lot of shit wasn't adding up or was adding up to something too big. Right. Right. Which it wasn't adding up in weight loss is what I was trying to say. Does that make sense? It does, but I don't know. You see, I know it's confused. I, 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 well, no, I don't. It's not that I'm confused. I just would find it hard to believe that somebody's eating just copious amounts of broccoli that that would make it's got to be something else. I'm sorry. 
It's usually not broccoli. No, you're right. And you know, she wasn't saying, Hey, I'm getting fat. She just she was shocked to see that, you know, because she was probably thinking about eating something else. And she looked around and went, Oh, wait, I've already listened to my thing. I look where I am on my carbs, you know, people don't think about it. Maybe those apps are good for that kind of thing. It keeps people accountable. I, you know, but yeah, yeah, no, no one's getting fat on broccoli. But it just goes to show you that you have this, you have that, you have the other thing before you know it, you have too much of something. Does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, you have said too since the beginning. It, <sighs> I know it's frustrating. Well, here's here's what I like about you. You've said the same thing since the beginning, and I'm going to say it wrong because I don't speak it, on, ironically. I can read other people's words, but I don't speak as well as you do about because I'm just the lady who tells you what to cook. Right. But right. when you've said you can't eat just anything you want without impunity, like there is a degree of, OK, you might overeat at first, but eventually it's going to correct and your port, right. your natural satiety signals will correct your portion control as opposed to you having to reduce from the very beginning. Right. Well, let's talk about those women who we were talking about protein on Friday. Yeah. Right. And they were going, Hey, I was losing weight, eating high fat. And then that wasn't really working anymore. And it's because at some point, the reason I tell people at the beginning, people like this, you know, the sky kings of the world, don't even look at fat. Don't, just eat it. You know, you know, I need to correct, I need to get you to fix your body, you need to fix your Getting hormone them off of the right. carb addiction train. Exactly. We need I, to, we yeah. need to get you to lessen that we need to get some inflammation down, we need to get your a one C's from 12 down to eight or nine, somewhere on a, a comfortable level, we need to get your triglycerides away from 400, get them down to 100 or less. We need to fix other things first. Right? And then when you start fixing that, then you start going, okay, it becomes more nuanced, right? You add in maybe a little more protein, you pull out a little more fat, right? Do you ever go low fat? Absolutely not. Now, as Coddington says, I'm dick skin ripped. He says that about me. He goes, and you eat fat all the time. That, that's correct. That is correct. Right? You can be ripped at almost 60 years old and eat fat you're not you're not going back to a low fat diet. But at first, I tell people eat all the fat you want, because I don't want you to feel like you're on a tightrope and there's no net. Right? You need to eat something while you're correcting everything else. And look, other people do it different ways. Um, uh, my friend Jason Fung will tell you, you know, hey, just intermittent fast or fast period, right? right. Uh, do a medical fast. Uh, my my other friend Sean Baker will say, "Hey man, uh, forget about everything. Just eat meat. Meat, yeah. You know, and, and you know, and is it are any of those guys wrong? No. Coddy Cod did it like that. He's he's one of my closest friends, the billionaire Don Coddington. He, he he had to look around and go, wait a minute, you know, I'm I'm not getting this done, you know, and he can ask me any question at any time, right? Right." but it wasn't working for him. Meaning he wasn't adhering to NSNG or the NSNG wasn't working. He couldn't do it. He just couldn't do it, Anna. For whatever reason, he couldn't, you know, he was, he's addicted to sugar. Right. Bottom so is that he was that guy who would do three days and then he'd have something or most of the day and then he'd have something, not knowing that that little something is keeping him from everything. Exactly. He, you know, he, he was like any other addicted person. By the way, when was the last time we played this? That might be too much of a song. They might have to pull it out of the video. <laughs> That's true. Sorry, Bill. <laughs> Sorry. About um, Villa Capelli is the best olive oil on the planet. I don't know if you know yeah. this. Oh, it is. I know that you don't have to tell me. I well, I'm gonna tell you right. Villa Capelli. It was in my mukbang. That's right. Villa Capelli is also in your vitamin D. It's in all my sauces. And it can be in your kitchen to cook with. If you go to villacapelli.com and you order the three liter tin, 
plus the salts and the spices. I highly recommend the garlic powder. He was talking about garlic earlier. Their mm-hmm. garlic powder is so good. I buy their garlic powder and I decant it into the glass jar garlic powder thing that I've had, you know, um, because I like the little jar. Uh, when you open it up, it punches you in the face. Yeah. With the garlic. It's so good. They have a rosemary powder. They have a, uh, well, they used to have the sun-dried tomato powder. Um, what's the other powder that I love? Oh, they have the sea salts and the grilling salts. They're oh, so, yeah. Just, yeah. Look, at it, everything Stephen does over there is a thousand percent high quality, better than anything you're going to find in the grocery store. Get the Villa Capali olive oil, buy it in the in- increments of three liter tins because you'll wind up using it and you'll regret it if you don't. I know he's going to raise the prices soon, maybe not till the next shipment. So get the things now, but he will raise the prices and make sure you stock up. Uh, go to villacapelli.com. That's two P's and two L's and Capelli, C-A-P-P-E-L-L-I, villacapelli.com. And use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E. You get 10% off your order each and every time. Here's a math problem. Vinny, if I order 10 three-liter tins and 10 garlic powders, and my order total is $1,000, and I use the discount code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, for 10% off my order, how much do I save? $100. That's right. You are correct. Yeah, I'm, I'm good at the math. Yeah. I can do some math. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, the oil. Yeah. So go get everything at Villa Capelli, promo code Vinny. You know what to do. Uh, but, but, but um, oh, I'm going to be at KetoCon. Me too. Con. Anna's going to be, um, Anna's going to be at KetoCon. Yeah. Uh, you could come there. We might and, even be sampling the pumpkin marinara while we're there. Yeah. Yeah. There and talk gonna, of it. Uh, look, it's going to be a party, Anna, because uh, I'm going to be around the booth all day long. Um, I'm going to be up there, you know, presenting at some point. I, I'm doing an ask me anything. And Anna, oh, geez. I don't know what the hell that is. I was going to say, was that you or me? That was me. Sometimes I start pressing buttons, Anna. And um, so at any point, uh, come check us out at KetoCon. If you want to say, if you get the whole three day package and put in promo code Vinny at checkout, you get 10% off. So put my name in, they'll give you some money off. 10% off KetoCon. Go check it out right now. But up up uh what else is there, Anna? Anything else? Um, get some eat happy kitchen sauce. Thank you for mukbanging during the show, Vinny. I appreciate it. By the way, if you subscribe, you get 10% off your order and you can go in and switch out your flavors. If you're like, this month, I want this one. You know what? This month I want the spicy marinara. This next month I want the pumpkin marinara. You can switch them out. Just want to put yeah. that out there. Eathappykitchen.com. That's all go, I got. Go check it all out. You know what to do with me. Uh, Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, go to VinnyTotters.com. All three of my movies are on Amazon. Go pick up a three-pack. Get Fat, a documentary. Fat, a documentary, two. Mm-hmm. And Beyond Impossible is ripping it up. You know, I'm getting on an airplane uh, today when this comes out. I'm going to be looking to see if my movie's on that plane yet. My movie's up. That's how you know you're doing well in the documentary department yeah. because there are a gazillion documentaries. And both of my first two movies ended up on uh, jet airliners, as they call it. Big old jet airliners. All my bags are packed. I'm ready to go. All I want to do is watch Beyond Impossible. Yeah. You- I hope JetBlue carries Amazon Prime. Wow. You see, yeah. Uh, you know, all of those years of improv is paying off right now. Uh, <laughs> the least profitable profit center in the entertainment industry, folks. Yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm, I'm smart at making choices. Oh, yeah. Anna knows how to kill it. Um, but uh, uh, and of course, we have the super fan page. So you can check that out. Let me turn this part. Off.